brothers, sisters, friends in Christ, we welcome you to this, our celebration of the Lord's Day. Come, let us worship. We begin with the call to worship. O oh God of all grace, your goodness we praise. Your son you have given to die in our place. Yes, our salvation is in the Lord Jesus Christ, who died for our sins and rose for our justification. We celebrate life in the Holy Spirit, who makes us love and live for God. Our God reigns. We shall be glad and wait for his word. We shall sing now the hymn number 27, Praise to the holiest in the height will be led by Sister Violet Roseburg. you to be the Lord. It is you who created us and you deserve the worship of our lips 
and of our lives. Oh God, that you should love us so much that you sent Jesus to be our Savior. That you should take upon yourself human form and human suffering and human pain. That you should go all the way to Calvary, Lord Jesus, and die for us is something that makes us we love you, Lord, because you first love us. You are holy, good in every way, gracious, giving us more than we can ever deserve. So considerate of all our needs, so giving and forgiving, blessing us in a myriad of ways, telling us that we are valuable, even choosing to lead us, helping us to see the way, enabling us in our weakness, directing us in our confusion, loving us when we are unloving and unlovable. Oh Lord, you are so good. We praise you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Jesus, our shepherd, our brother, our friend, our prophet, priest, and king, we adore you. We ask you to accept the praise we bring. Holy Spirit, our helper and comforter, dwelling with us and continually ushering us into the peaceful presence of God, we bless you. We ask you to visit us afresh even now and cause us to celebrate your presence within and around us. Help us to recognize that you have chosen us to worship you in thought, in word, and in deed. So draw near us, God. Draw near us and bless us that we may bless others even for your sake. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. And now for our prayer of confession. Let us pray. Holy and merciful God, we confess to you and to one another in communion with all the saints that we have sinned through our own fault in thought and word and deed, in what we have done and in what we have failed to do. We have not loved you with our heart, soul, mind, and strength, we have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We have not loved one another as Christ has loved us. We have not forgiven others as we have been forgiven. We have grieved your Holy Spirit. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. We confess to you, O oh God, <laughs> all our past unfaithfulness, the pride, hypocrisy, and impatience of our lives, our self-indulgence, and our exploitation of other people. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. We confess our preoccupation with worldly goods and comforts and our envy of others. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. We confess our blindness to human need and suffering, our indifference to injustice and cruelty, our misuse and pollution of creation, our lack of concern for generations to come. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. 
we confess our negligence in prayer and worship and our failure to commend to others the faith that is in us. Lord, have mercy. Christ, Christ have, have mercy. We thank the almighty yet merciful God for the opportunity to repent, for the enabling of the Holy Spirit to amend our lives, for free pardon and forgiveness of our sins through Jesus Christ our Lord, and for the grace and comfort of God's holy presence. Amen. Amen. Thanks, thanks be to God. God. And we give thanks as we worship the Lord. His name is wonderful. Yolanda and Myrna Bromley will lead us. His name is wonderful, number 43. His name is wonderful, His name is wonderful, His name is wonderful, Jesus my Lord. He is the mighty King, Master of everything, His name is wonderful, Invite our circuit steward, Brother Lescat Thomas, to bring us greetings and announcements for today. All the paths of the Lord are steadfast love and faithfulness for those who keep his covenant and his decrees. Psalm chapter 25, verse 10. Announcements for today, Sunday, February the 21st. 2021 are as follows. On behalf of our superintendent minister, the Reverend Dr. June Delsel Mead, and the officers of the Holland Methodist Church, a warm and heartfelt welcome is extended to all far and near, tuning in, watching, and worshiping with us today. Today we observe the first Lord's Day in Lent. Worship today is live stream from Sutomir. 
The service is being conducted by Reverend Dr. Joan Delsol Mead together with the children and the youth. We thank the live stream team, our musicians, singers, readers, and all who contribute for their continued efforts to live stream worship services. We extend birthday greetings to Tishanel Petronia from our church school, Rotterdam, celebrating her birthday on Wednesday, February the 24th. We also extend birthday greetings to Sister Sandra Brown from our Amsterdam congregation, celebrating on Saturday, February the 27th. May God richly bless you all on this your special day and grant you many more years to come in good health. Sick and shut in members, we continue to pray for all the housebound, the sick, and those recovering from illness and surgery. We pray especially for Wendy Martina, the brother of Sister Sharina Martina, who was hospitalized. We also pray a special prayer for Sister Essie Dolmoy, who is ill at home. We ask God's healing touch and protection upon them as we hold them up in our prayers. Circuit announcements. Discipleship classes online, program, reaching new persons to Christ are scheduled every second and fourth Tuesday and Thursday of each month from 7.30 p.m. to 9 p.m. You are reminded of the upcoming sessions on Tuesday 23rd and Thursday 25th of February. The GoFundMe project is still ongoing. Funds that are raised will be used to upgrade the live streaming of worship services. We are grateful for those who donated, but your financial support is still much appreciated in order to reach our goal. At the end of this service, a slide will be presented with more details of this project. We are also in need of persons who wish to render their talents in helping the live stream team in the various actions needed to stream the worship services. IT experience is a prey, not a must. Do indicate your interest by sending an email to circuitstaff at hollandmethodistchurch.org. The 1st to the 5th of March will be observed as Women's Week of Prayer, culminating in the World Day of Prayer. From Monday, the 1st of March to Thursday, 4th March, all are invited to prayer meetings conducted by the women of the circuit. The meeting will commence nightly at 7.30 p.m. and will follow the program observed across the district. World Day of Prayer service will be live streamed on Friday, March the 5th at 7 p.m. The Zoom links to these services will be shared next week. We extend an invitation to everyone to join us for the Dutch service today after the English worship at 4.15 p.m. conducted by Sister Sasha Christopher with children and youth. We also invite you to join us on Sunday, February the 28th, second Lord's Day in Lent, and the Methodist Church in the Caribbean and the Americas 
Men's Lord's Day. Live stream from Amsterdam. The circuit men will be joining men from across the connection in conducting worship. Guest preacher, Reverend Vinod Sarasam. A special offering will be taken for men's work. We wish you all a blessed and fruitful week ahead. Be careful and stay safe. We pause now for your free will offerings and tithes towards the work of the Lord. See the account numbers on your screen. Let us pray. Lord, we thank you for your faithfulness. Thank you that we can always trust in you. You are an abundant God and out of your great mercy you have given us so much. We give you this offering today. With it we worship you and give our whole selves to you. Please now take it and use it for your kingdom and your glory. Extend and multiply its reach and influence, we pray. May it be a great blessing to many. We ask all this in the powerful name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. We thank Brother Lescott. His notices were pre-recorded. Since he did that, we have an update. The, we have the link for the World Day of Press service. It will be posted on the circuit website. Also, unfortunately, got the news since he recorded that Sister Essie Domoy has been hospitalized. And we want to add to the celebrants Sister Myrna Romley, who just sounds so beautifully, she'll be celebrating her birthday on Tuesday, the 23rd. Happy birthday when it comes, Sister Myrna. And now for children's ministry time. Measures and youngins. Moon star, the gun and weave and head season, that christenen, wastai nomen, perti gaffen. We herino and ons the virgin garden that Jesus fasted. Tithens this season, proberen we dipped by hod to common. Thus we doen mere van de dingen the dick by hod sign. So as faster, bidder, mere heaven and mensen in do in nood. So me the medicine came the pile of foodings, middle and up was in veil band penitent, committed. My ding in need a billing bright sign for an person high. Ma had all the bill, grand billing bright stuff I can make is act dick by court design. Who couldn't kinder and do in? Um, dick by cord, by cord design. Who could ye cord the happen? Head erster is naturally bidder. Bid el kodah. For we of what to bid? Bid for himself that he had order so do. Bid for either way. Bid for the henem, the zig sign, some of the coronavirus. Bid for her family. Bid for your cousin. As the animal began to bid up, Zully air stays mere vinden on for to bid. You stop need me bid up. Lateral bid. Jesus, friend, friend, van kleine kinderen, 
wees een vrouw van mij. Blijf dicht bij mij en help me om dicht bij u te blijven. Amen. We have the song now by Sister Violet Roseburg, Kinderen, and the Vertic Dagger. We in Lent, remembering those 40 days. Me alone, me alone, hymn number 88, song by Sister Violet Roseburg. As we prepare our hearts to receive God's word, read, spoken, proclaimed, we pray together the collect for today. Almighty God, whose Son Jesus Christ fasted 40 days in the wilderness and was tempted as we are, yet without sin, Give us grace to discipline ourselves in obedience to your spirit, and as you know our weakness, so may we know your power to save through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord. Amen. We shall now have reading of scripture. The Old Testament lesson will be read by Sister Saitani Woodney. Woodley, one of our students from Stacia, the New Testament epistle will be read by Tishona Petronia, one of the children from the Rotterdam congregation. The Old Testament lesson is taken from Genesis chapter 9, 
reading from verses 8 to 17. Genesis chapter 9, reading from verses 8 to 17. Then God said to Noah and to his sons with him, As for me, I am establishing my covenant with you and your descendants after you, and with every living creature that is with you, the birds, the domestic animals, and every animal of the earth with you, as many as came out of the ark. I establish my covenant with you, that never again shall all flesh be cut off by the waters of a flood, and never again shall there be a flood to destroy the earth. God said, This is a sign of the covenant that I make between me and you and every living creature that is with you for all future generations. I have set my bow in the clouds, and it shall be a sign of the covenant between me and the earth. When I bring clouds over the earth, and the bow is seen in the clouds, I will remember my covenant that is between me and you, and every living creature of all flesh. And the water shall never again become a flood to destroy all flesh. When the bow is in the clouds, I will see it and remember the everlasting covenant between God and every living creature of all flesh that is on the earth. God said to Noah, This is a sign of the covenant that I have established between me and all flesh that is on the earth. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The reading has been taken from 1 Peter chapter 3, verse 18 to 22. For Christ also suffered for sins once for all, the righteous for the unrighteous, in order to bring you to God. He was put to death in the flesh, but made alive in the spirit, in which also he went and made a proclamation to the spirits in prison, who, for, who in former times did not obey when God God waited patiently in the days of Noah, during the building of the ark, in which a few, that is eight persons, were saved through water, and baptism which this prefigured not saves you, not as a removal of dirt from the body, but as an appeal to God for a good conscience to the resur resurrection of Jesus Christ who has gone into heaven and is at the right hand of God, with angels, authorities, and powers made subject to him. This is the word of our Lord. Thanks be to God. The gospel is taken from Mark chapter 1, verses 9 through 15. Glory to you, Lord. In those days, Jesus came from Nazareth of Galilee and was baptized by John in the Jordan. And just as he was coming up out of the water, he saw the heavens torn apart and the spirit descending like a dove on him. And a voice came from heaven, You are my son, the beloved. With you I am well pleased. And the spirit immediately drove him into the wilderness. He was in the wilderness 40 days, tempted by Satan, and he was with the wild beasts, and the angels waited on him. Now, after John was arrested, Jesus came to Galilee, proclaiming the good news of God and saying, The time is fulfilled, and the kingdom of God has come near. Repent and believe the good news, the gospel of Christ. Praise, Praise be to Christ, Christ our Lord. Lord. Let us pray. Help me, Lord, to speak for you so the words I proclaim, the meditation of our hearts, and the response of our lives will glorify your name. Amen. I read the last two verses from the gospel read from Mark. Now, after Jesus was arrested, 
After John was arrested, Jesus came to Galilee proclaiming the good news of God and saying, the time is fulfilled. The kingdom of God has come near. Repent and believe the good news. The time is ripe for good news. It is time to change our attitude towards God. It is time to believe in God. Let me state this another way. The good news that we need is right here, right now. We need to continually change our ways and accept God's good offer, which is as good as it will ever get. First of all, the kingdom of God is God's doing. Here in the gospel, we find a critical moment in time. The time is fulfilled and the kingdom of God has come near. According to Mark, this time came in real time. You see, the gospel writer is really using time in two senses. He wrote about the time after John was arrested, a certain day or a set week or a given month. It was some time after John was arrested and imprisoned. John had a public ministry in Judea and that had come to an end. Now note here that Mark doesn't even give details about this, about what this arrest of John was about. It is only until we get to the sixth chapter of his gospel where he recounts it, he says that it was Herod who had him beheaded because John had pointed out Herod's wrongdoing having his brother's wife. So yes, that was in real time when John preached in Judea, inviting persons to get ready for the coming of the Lord, inviting them to a baptism of repentance. That happened at a certain time, the time we tell by clocks and calendars. The Greek word for that is chronos, from which we get chronology, what happens first and then after it and so on. Yet, at that same time, Mark says that John was handed over, something that incidentally we missed in the new Revised Standard Version translation. It just says he was arrested. But in real other translations that are more faithful to the Greek, and they will tell you that John was handed over. Because that expression, handed over, seems to suggest God's hand in the matter. Bible scholars refer to it as a divine passing. Something such as what we read when, or something when we say to God, God, why are you letting this happen? You know, we, we ascribe the responsibility to God for what happens. Well, the, the gospel writer does that very often with that word paradidomi it is. Just as when he speaks several places of Jesus being handed over. For example, in Chapter 9 and verse 31, Mark writes, the Son of Man is going to be handed over, delivered into the hands of men. Furthermore, the Gospel writer definitely refers to God when he writes, the time is fulfilled. In other words, time is right. Time is from a different perspective to saying the time when John was arrested. We would see God's time. Such as we read in Galatians chapter 4 and verse 4, but when the fullness of time had come, God sent his son born of a woman. Mark here, I say, is talking about time in a different sense, what the Greeks call Kairos, not Kronos, Kairos. Throughout their time, God's people had been anticipating God's deliverance on their behalf. Here, 
Mark is saying that the right time had arrived. After the, their long wait for deliverance, dawn was about to break. Only God could bring the deliverance they needed. The decisive moment had come. God's kingdom, the reign of God, was about to break in. It was, however, a very different kind of kingdom to what the people had anticipated because they had been wanting and waiting for some military might, some military action to set them free from their enemies. Nonetheless, the message of Jesus was that the coming of this kingdom was God's good news. It was the central theme of Jesus' preaching. Good news, the euangelion. But while the gospel writer repeats Jesus' proclamation that it is good news of God, in other words, that it is God's doing, there are other things to note. So the first thing that we get from this verse in Mark is that the arrival of God's kingdom, the reign of God, depends on God. It is God's good news for us. Now, while we cannot miss the point that God's coming to us in Jesus, who calls the people, who called the people then, and who calls us, we should know two important things that are ours to do. In other words, the first one is about God's action. The other two are about human action. What are they? First, we must repent. Second, we must believe in the good news. Repent. Repent is best understood in terms of the word it translates, metanoa, a change of, that's a Greek word, it means change of mind. Please bear that meaning in mind. Many people think of repentance as having guilt feelings. You know how many people feel guilty because they have done wrong and still do nothing about it? Just feeling guilty without taking the next step is what makes it impossible for persons to claim forgiveness and to certainly forgive themselves. When we move beyond forgiveness to repentance, and only then do we discover that the God who is entitled to punish us actually forgives us. And then we start to learn to forgive ourselves. Ourselves. Forgiveness is just feeling sorry. No. You know how many people feel sorry when they are obviously wrong simply because they are obviously wrong? They really wish that they had operated in such a way that their wrong would not steer back at them. They are only sorry because they got caught. Given a fresh chance, they might do the same thing, but only covering their tracks better so that their guilt stays uncovered. Being sorry for the consequences of our wrongdoing is really not the same as being sorry for having done wrong. It's not always the same for sure. Repentance, I say, is about seeing things differently. Having new eyes for seeing. Looking at things from a different perspective. In fact, just feeling guilty can be crippling. We just feel guilty. We feel unworthy. And we don't step to the next level of appreciating why we feel free to be coming and doing wrong. Repentance is active. And more than simply feeling sorry. More than feeling sorry while taking no steps to make amends. Repentance hits the current situation 
it is simply not satisfied with things as they are. It, is, it, it understands the urgency that comes with God's timing. If it's God's time, then it's time to respond to God. And repentance always pleases God. The Bible tells us that the humble and contrite heart, God does not despise. When Jesus called the Israelites to repentance, he was calling them to turn away from practices that will be misleading, pulling them away from God. Such things as the worship of false gods, failing to give God first place in their lives. When John called people to repent, we read elsewhere that they chose to flee from the wrath that was to come. They responded to his proclamation by changing their ways. We may not given, be given into witchcraft or idolatry of the sort practice in a different age and place. But when we prioritize persons, including ourselves, and practices over what God is leading us into, we are just as guilty. The question for us is, what ways, what practices, what habits do we engage in? What attitudes do we treasure? What ways of thinking and doing that we sense are contrary to what God desires of us? What do we need to repent of? Many people, even some in the church, restrict the meaning of repentance to what people do when they first come to the Lord. This is quite in line with the Hebrew term for, 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 for repent, shuv, which suggests about to, moving towards God instead of moving away from God. Yes, you may sincerely sing like the hymnist, I was sinking deep in sin, far from the peaceful shore. Very deeply stained with sin, sinking to rise no more. Then the master of the sea heard my despairing cry. From the waters lifted me, no save am I. Yeah, he lifted you and you were saved by grace. You found new life in Jesus and you'll never be the same again. But that does not mean that you are already made perfect in love. The journey has only just begun. In the Methodist Church, we emphasize clearly the difference between justification and sanctification. Hear us. Our salvation is in the Lord Jesus Christ, who died for our sins and rose for our justification. Justification is what Jesus does for us by setting us free from the record of guilt we have incurred through sin. But once we have entered that life in Christ, there is a journey to pursue. Our confidence is in the Holy Spirit who enables us to become God's children. When we continue in relationship with Jesus as God's children, we need to grow in goodness. If we say justification is what Jesus does for us, saving us by faith, then sanctification, growth in holiness, in godliness is what the spirit continues to do in us causing us to shed bad habits and replace them with good ones as we repent repentance is remember about embracing the new mindset as we continue in faith it is not a once and for all action that is over and done with. 
when whereas John called the people to a first time sort of repentance and a baptism that signified that they had repented, we're still called to repentance. Hear what Mark says about Jesus. He told the people to repent and believe in the good news. The two things do to be done together. So may I ask, which things do we sense God's Spirit saying to us? It's time to give this up. It's time to put them away. Yes, repentance has not only to do with our actions, but our thought patterns as well. How often do we judge others wrongly? How often do we entertain a sense of superiority? Me? I would never do something like that. Yes, our readiness to judge rather than to pray for the wrongdoer is deep-seated. We can tell ourselves, you know, when it's our sinfulness rather than our righteousness that leads to our judgment of others. How often do we condemn people for doing certain things but when our family members and friends do the same thing we find some reason why the same behavior is acceptable we all need to repent and thirdly we believe in the good news it's my third point but it's the second that's required the first is god's breaking in of god's kingdom the second is our need to repent. And the third, our need to believe in the good news. Take Jesus at his word. Note, it says believe in. It's not just believing. This is not believing in an intellectual sense. It is about believing in Christ. Not just believing about Christ. What does James say? You believe? You have faith? You do well? The demons believe and shut up. Here Jesus is inviting us to have faith in him. Believe in God. Believe also in me. This is the good news. The faith that gives us the victory in our daily living. The faith that prepares us for a better life day by day. The good news of Jesus Christ. Paul tells us in Ephesians 1.13 that it's the good news of salvation. In Galatians 2, he says it's the good news of truth. In Colossians, he refers to it as the good news of hope. In Ephesians 6, he tells us it's the good news of peace. It is altogether good news that God sent Jesus to do for us what we will never be able to do for ourselves, to save us from both the guilt and the power of sin. When we start, we are saved from the record, the guilty record against us, and when we continue to believe in him, as we daily walk with him, he saves us from the power of sin. He not only forgives our sins. We repeat it often. If we confess our sins, God who is faithful and just will forgive us our sins and will cleanse us from all unrighteousness. And that happens as we continue to repent and as we continue to believe in Christ. Faith in Christ, believing God's good news, brings its own confidence. The writer of the letter to the Hebrews tells us it is the assurance of things not seen. God, give us the confidence that you are who you say you are and that with you nothing is impossible. Help us, O oh Lord, to believe that you truly love us and you want the best for us. So we stick by you affirming that nothing in all creation will separate us from your love. 
help us, oh God, to believe in you. Give us the faith that sinks the mountains of doubt and fear and insecurity and all that you don't intend for us. Give us the faith in you that will sink all these mountains to a plane. Help us to repent and believe. If repentance suggests the life that we must leave behind, faith, believing in Jesus, is suggestive of the new disposition that must guide our lives after. In the following hymn, we shall sing, Take Time to Be Holy, the hymnist suggests the attitude, the practices, that describe what our whole agenda to, should be. So let us commit ourselves. Let us commit ourselves to not just continually repenting, but to also continually grow in faith in God as we sing, take time to be holy. Sisters Barbara, Shaniqua, Leah, along with Brother Lescar, We'll sing. We will sing and pray with them. Take time to be holy. have our prayers of intercession let us pray for the universal church 
We ask, O oh God, for your Holy Spirit's guidance for all who seek renewal during the season of Lent, that we may be increasingly conformed to the image of Christ our head. We ask that, in deliberately following Christ, your church will offer hope and healing in a troubled world. Lord, hear us. Lord, Lord graciously hear us. Let us pray to God for those who have power and influence and for all who govern the nations, that they will not ignore the needs of the most vulnerable, that they will pay attention to those who are marginalized by structures of power, that they will deliberately seek the well-being of persons whom their societies treat unjustly, that they will promote justice, freedom, and peace for all. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. Let us pray for homes and families, particularly those with children and young people. Let us pray that parents and significant others seek to understand and to communicate with their children and help them cope in the current unusual situation that we are experiencing. Let us pray for school teachers, youth workers, caregivers of children and youth, especially those who are, difficult, who are having difficulty man managing the strain caused by current necessary regulations. Lord, by your grace, enable those who work and who wish to make a positive difference in leading children and youth to lead whole and healthy lives. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. Let us pray for the poor, the powerless, victims of political injustice, those who are imprisoned because they promote just causes. Let us hold before the throne of grace those who have lost loved ones in COVID-related or other causes and cannot find the spaces and places in which to grieve. Let us remember those who are mentally ill and suffer from loneliness and depression. Let us remember too those who are burdened with the weight of caring for others, sometimes while they also need to be cared for. We pray that we may truly seek to be God's healing instruments, ministers in Christ's name, who bring recovery and relief as God enables us to. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. Let us pray. Let us remember before God all those persons who have requested our prayers. Let us remember particularly those of our fellowship who are housebound, ill, or recovering from illness. We remember Gloria Booker, Elsie Thomas, Marjorie Romnett, Daphne Candelaria, Patricia Matthews, Violet Lake, James Mason, Essie Donoy. Lord, we ask you to visit Sister Essie in the hospital even now and cause her to sense your nearness and know the power of your healing presence. We pray too for Sylvia Gons, Winifred Hughes, Hilda McCoy, Irma and Ronald Laito, Hassan Violinas, Emmy Lanoy, Ramon Hassel, Maricia Vanterpool, Randy Martina. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. Eternal God, through the self suffering of your Son, you have filled our lives with your presence. Help us in our sufferings and trials, 
and strengthen us in our weakness through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. We join in the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, 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 hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give, give us this day our daily bread, and, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. The kingdom, the power, and the glory. Amen. Our closing hymn is sung by the Richardson sisters. It is number 290. Abba, Father, let me be yours. And let us all commit ourselves to stay close to God. This night and always. And it is lenter in the Dutch sense. When last did we have the sun shining through at this hour? Praise the Lord. Praise Lord. Yeah. Thank you, Lord, for all who have made this worship experience happen, including the three who are here with me, brothers Glenn and Pedro and Sister Tassica. I invite you to join the Dutch worship service with Sister Sasha and the children. Especially let children be a part of that experience. I think it's meant more for them than anything else. The young people, they will find it useful. Yeah, receive the benediction. May the God of peace, who brought again from the dead our Lord Jesus Christ, the great shepherd of the sheep, with the blood of the eternal covenant, make you perfect in every good thing to do his will, working in us that which is well-pleasing in his sight, through Jesus Christ, to whom be the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Amen.